Hello there, welcome back to Sons of Cottage and Tunis. Last time, well, we got ourselves into a discussion slash war with uh, Castilla here. Not really helpful at all. Uh, I will probably have to give up a Fezian province or two in order to actually make peace here. Uh, all in all, it's not looking too good. The war goal is Melilla, so what I think what we're actually going to do here again is make a push to try and get to Melilla and basically take it back. Now the odds of something like this being as successful is kind of uh, kind of low. We also decided to attack the Mamluks with the aid of the Ottomans, uh, but unfortunately the uh, Castilians attacked then, and as such we end up white piecing with them uh, in an attempt to try and drag the uh, the Ottoman forces into this war. But unfortunately, Ottoman got themselves embroiled in a war against Akakonlu, and uh, well, Timurids. Ottomans, everyone. So the only thing that I can really do hope for here is I think I basically have two choices right now. I can wait and hope that these guys will more or less destroy themselves. Uh, well, run out of uh, steam, if you will, which is not too likely, but it is a it is an option nonetheless. Uh, we'll basically hope that the Ottomans manage to finish their war rather rapidly, which again is not a very good option but it is uh, something that I can do if I want to and apparently it seems like we will lose this war right now because they are attacking us and they will approach in May so let's just see how this battle goes uh, we will actually win that battle which is kind of surprising military tech wise they are at 5 we are at almost 6 so we, couldn't, we can actually win this war provided that we get some more of those results but again this is kind of a awkward scenario if we defeat these guys it would definitely be a, a huge upset if you ask me so we'll just uh, we'll just keep on keep on doing what we have been doing and hopefully here we can as I said get the result the main goal here will of course be to peace out Portugal rather rapidly hopefully and if we can keep Melilla under our control then I don't see any reason why we should not be able to uh, to quite frankly just outlast them so we have upgraded our military attack here which is of course uh, rather important and uh, as you can see, military attacks by 0 0.25, combat width increased by 2, infantry shock by 0 0.3, and we get a new type of cavalry that I'm actually going to upgrade to more or less right away because it's hopefully stronger. I would at least presume it is stronger. And uh, also, I might add that when this game is, uh, or now, the save game has been updated to, uh, to uh, 1.6. And one of the funny things about 1.6 is that if I build an embassy right now, uh, but usually you would get a plus 10 to co-creation cost but they have changed the uh, oh, sorry enemies would get plus 10 to co-creation cost but they have actually changed that uh, in the recent time to uh, you basically don't get a extra cost to co-creation cost as per se you get an extra diplomatic relation so basically the embassy has become a really powerful uh, a really powerful building with that because the player don't really have too many problems with basically having their provinces being conquered and thus needing to take advantage of that uh, well cheaper core co-creation uh, so to speak now what we are going to do is actually upgrade the admin tech because we might as well we get a plus 10 to production efficiency which will give me a little bit of extra cash here which could actually prove vital and uh, with that I can build a farm estate now I'm just hoping that these guys will actually attack me without a leader again that would actually be really useful but uh, I doubt that will be the case. It seems like they'll probably join up now and destroy my army. Oh, they won't actually. They'll join up their armies and go into my lands. Again, the goal here is to try and peace out Portugal rather rapidly. But again, that is uh, not too likely. Apparently, they've actually changed this too. So, Peasants' War, Civil War. Oh, it actually tells me now when this can actually happen. So, that's kind of useful. I didn't actually know that. Stability, more exhaustion. Interesting. Anything else have changed? Not that I can see. They probably changed the position of something, and I just can't realize it just yet. Uh, anyways, I like what I'm. I like what I'm seeing. I'll give them that. Um, I'm a little bit unsure what I want to focus on, so I think we'll just keep that as it is for now. And I'm not hiring a a guy to help with the with the um, how should I put this? 
uh, with the bonus points. Now, this is a Castilian army without a leader, and luckily enough, it didn't actually attack us, but it went off that Tafilalt army, which is not the best. And again here, this is kind of useful for me, because they're splitting up their armies, they're running out of uh, manpower, etc. And unfortunately here, we'll have to blame the Sultan. But, uh, yeah, we'll reduce war exhaustion, I think, is kind of necessary to keep ourselves going. And hopefully here, the war exhaustion that Castile and Portugal are actually crewing here could be enough to peace out at least Portugal. And then we we'll basically just have to defend ourselves until the point where I can actually demand something from Castile. For instance, the release of uh, Granada, then peacefully vassalize them. Sounds like a great idea, yeah. But um, the big question is here, can we actually pull it off? Now, after I re siege Melilla, I'll be going after Ucha here. And hopefully that will be uh, that will be enough to to keep us going. But I'm kind of surprised that the Castilians actually have placed themselves where they have. But I'm also really surprised that in the desert here, they only get plus one to, uh, to attrition, even though it's arid and they are actually a little bit over the uh, unit base is 12. They are plus 50 to the supply limbs, apparently. Or basically, they uh, have the Portuguese as well. But basically, the fact that they have no leaders in my land kind of puts them at a disadvantage. If I get uh, defensive bonuses, I can most likely tear those armies apart. Which, of course, is really, really useful. But, uh, Sir Tiofra, they are... They're definitely causing some trouble here. So, we'll try and take back Uja, and, of course, they're actually coming back to Melilla here, it seems. So, if I'm lucky, I can actually... I think I can defeat this Castilian army, I'm a little bit sure. There we go, the Ottomans are unfortunately out of the war. That's uh, that's bad news for us, but uh, not too much. We have some Moroccan patriots here. Are they in favor of Castile? No, no, no. First freedom fighters shouldn't be in favor of Castile. But again here, the goal here will be to actually peace out Portugal as soon as we can. And I actually can right now. I can concede defeat and get the Portuguese out of this, so... Why not do that? It's perfect. And also, as you can see, we have Berber Patriots, we have uh, Moroccan Patriots. In theory, these guys will be really useful for the purpose of, uh, well, winning the war, because they will give me, well, they will resiege the provinces. I believe they'll actually give it back to Fez and uh, and Tafilal. So there's no reason for me not to be, uh, not to celebrate this joyous occasion, if you will. And also here, if I weaken Castile enough, I could imagine uh, Portugal betraying them. Potentially. But we'll have to see here. The war here is definitely winnable at this point, and I'm sorry for blabbering for so long. Uh, what I will do, however, now is try and research this. Uh, I'll probably create another video uh, before my next uh, my next achievement of this one. They have added a ton of achievements in 1.9, so I'll do probably do a patch notes, patch update, uh, whatever you want to call it. I will discuss the different points and uh, my views if that would be interesting. And of course, we'll also there consider what achievement I might want to do next. So for the time being, we'll just siege or uh, we'll resiege this province, and then we'll go after the uh, Castilian force. Unfortunately, yeah, the rebels don't actually hand the provinces over to my guys, which is kind of uh, kind of bad. And also, apparently, the Castilians are incredibly more adept at sieging than my army is surprisingly enough, but they are. Of course, we have another Blame the Sultan event. So we lost two stability points so far. I'm a little bit unsure what I want to do with these rebels, but at least they are actually they are actually kind of helpful in this scenario. They're bringing down the war score. The only thing I'm kind of worried about here is that potentially they will uh, forcefully, to some degree, end up dropping my... Uh, end up dropping my... Uh, or giving the provinces to... Uh, to Morocco, which of course would not be great, but it's not really like I have too much of a choice in the matter. There we go, Castile army here being uh, thoroughly annihilated and destroyed. I'm going to destroy this 6,000 man army too, and then I think I might actually have to walk up here and try and deal with the rebels. I don't think they'll hand the provinces over to Moroccan patriots, so I'm actually going to hand them over to Morocco. That's not good. That's not good at all, but I don't get why they carry the flag of the uh, of Fez, so to speak. It's a little bit surprising. Uh, anyways, doesn't matter. We'll resiege our provinces, and once we've done that again, I will uh, get ready for battling or getting into Castile itself, which actually sounds like a horrible idea, no matter how we look at it. But it is what it is. If I can actually get into Castile, I can definitely force them to release, for instance, uh, Granada, which would be 
tremendously useful in this scenario. Let's just face it, if I force him to release Granada, which I actually can get to, because of the simple reason that the war score that I will be given from uh, holding uh, holding our province here will get up to 25 apparently. I thought it was 40, but apparently that's just from battles then. So I need to actually get into Castile, Siege Cadiz, Siege uh, Gibraltar, just Siege Tangiers even could be really, really useful in this scenario. So we'll probably rely on that. I'm a little bit unsure what these guys will do if they'll destroy this army. No, they are not actually aggressive towards half the land army, so I don't see how the Bobby Patriots here will actually do anything except re-siege the provinces, which is a little bit surprising. But again, I'll just allow the sieges to uh, complete, and then we'll go after this Castilian army again. There we go, Sirt has finally been resieged, and I've figured out why I have such immense problems actually resieging the Castilian provinces. Due to the fact that Castile is a lucky nation, they get a bonus to uh, basically defense during the sieges of approximately 10%. That 10% is kind of a big deal, especially when it comes to sieges, because uh, it means it takes an awful lot of time to resiege anything that Castile has conquered. And funnily enough, with the Moroccan Patriots that were stuck in uh, Fezlands, if I if I may, ended up deciding to... Now this is something. Tafalalti... What? Okay, I need a... I need a... Uh, I need someone to explain that one to me. Apparently Tafilal peasants rose up, but they didn't rise up in Tafilal. Instead, they rose up in, in Fez, in the occupied provinces there. And as a result, well, things turn out to be kind of weird. And funnily enough, it seems like the Castilians actually lost their fleet. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because they've been dropping 2,000 regiments uh, all across the board, more or less. So, basically, they are being kind of a douche canoe to some degree, because they're dropping these 2,000 men regiments that are slowly but surely getting destroyed, which is of course really really helpful, but kind of weird nonetheless, and these tiny tiny regiments uh, of course means that I can completely destroy their army over and over again, because they're just so small, and in theory I'd also assume that my fleet could potentially be theirs right now, so we're going to take a risk here, we're going to move my fleet into the same area where they have their fleet. And if I'm lucky here, yeah, we might be able to, uh, well, drop some, drop some troops into their lands, which of course would be hilariously useful. They have a three uh, transport fleet here, so I'll keep my eyes open. They still have quite a bit of forces here, the alliance, if you will, but I think we can, if I, if I get everything working here, get the, get the right result. But I need to protect Melilla. I need to, I think, siege Tangiers. I'll probably try and get some troops into their lands, which again is kind of scary. Castile has 27,000 troops left. So I might actually, again, be able to pull something off here. They are also negative prestige. So if I can just bring that even further down, things are going to get really, really interesting. Especially as the current scenario. If I can just weaken them even further, I'm pretty sure that the French will attack them, provided that they find their Casus Belli, or at least find the guts to create said Casus Belli. So, I might I might definitely be in a very good position here. And of course, uh, worst case scenario, I'll just have to wait it out even, even longer. But, right now, my nation isn't really suffering any uh, negative repercussions from this, more or less. So, if I can just... Uh, if I can just wait this out, I think we, I think we'll end up in a pretty good position. So if there's any bigger Castilian armies coming, I'll show you. If not, I'll just leave things as they are. I'll be moving my fleet to uh, to Dara or Mitidia here, and the reason for that is I'm hoping that the Castilians will keep on pouring their smaller regiments into my land. Uh, it's probably a horrible idea to place the navy there, but I kind of want to resiege, uh, resiege. Uh, uh, Melilla here rather rapidly, and as a result, I got uh, I got in a bad situation. But it's not too much I can do about that right now. We're just going to continue resieging the provinces of our of our vassals, and hopefully here we can get the results that we want against Castile. I will not be messing with these Moroccan patriots just yet. They can definitely prove uh, useful in the future, and hopefully here I can again get a positive result. My vassals are suffering from this. That is. Uh, that's just a simple truth. Susie and Nationalist and Tafel Alt. Uh, but yeah, we we might have to make a piece here just to make sure that my vassals don't fall apart. 
Although it could actually be kind of beneficial because I would imagine a Susie and Vassal would most likely end up uh, being allied with Morocco. Or worst case scenario, I'll just uh, I'll just uh, uh, ensure that Morocco is a free state, so to speak, and boom, we have uh, or oh, what's it called Pre guaranteeing independence, so to speak, and then I'll be called in Morocco. I doubt, really doubt, that Morocco would end up in a situation where they would be able to call in, uh, call in, damn it, call in the Mamluks against uh, a very small nation in the area. So we'll have to see here, it's, uh, it's quite possible that we currently will be able to force the release of uh, of Granada and thus get ourselves a foothold into, into Castile, so to speak, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, relying on the French being willing, in this case, to declare war. On, on Castile, but uh, it seems to be kind of Castile seems to be kind of a very safe nation in terms of the fact that they have uh, they're, they're protected, so to speak, and uh, that makes them kind of hard to deal with. But again, we'll uh, I'll just allow time to pass for a little while, and we'll see if we find a good solution to this. So I've been doing a little bit of reconnaissance and. Naples have 10,000 men in uh, Naples, Aragon has 10,000 men in Aragon, and funnily enough, Castile and Aragon has, well, most of their forces in homelands. There's a 14,000 Castilian force standing in Murcia, there is a 14,000 men force standing in, well, he died, doesn't matter. He was a good general though, which is kind of, uh, kind of annoying. But the new ruler is 321, the air is 530, which is kind of a really good reason why I'm going to do this. We need a military power, the current rulers are not fit to create so military power, so it's better to, well, do that. Luckily enough, this guy got actually a pretty decent shock modifier of 4, which is surprising to say the least. But this is the third time I had to increase stability during this, uh, during this recording. Anyways, as you can see here, there's an Aragonese force of uh, 14,000 here, there's a Castilian force of, uh, well, uh, 14,000 here. And what I'm actually considering here is landing in Cadiz or Granada or Almeria, and basically, uh, if you will, try and siege a couple of their provinces. I'm going to keep the Moroccan Patriots doing what they do best, which is being kind of obnoxious here. And I'm also tempted to actually go on to Galicia again here, declare war without a Castus Belli, to get myself a... Uh, basically just to get myself a a uh, place to be, but Austria kind of has a tiny little navy. They'll probably be allowed to walk to France through their alliance, which is not good for me, or my chances of survival, which is kind of uh, not good. But again, what I'm kind of thinking is that we're going to take a chance at landing our army in Castile itself, and it's kind of a risky maneuver, to be perfectly honest. But I think it is the best one that I can make at this uh, at this point. If I can just siege one Castilian province, I think that might actually be enough to force Castile to to hand over the the, the landing question. Manpower-wise, Castile isn't really that strong anymore. They have well, they have grown to 95,000. They have 33,000 men on their own, so probably this is a horrible idea. Um, we're actually just going to wait this out even further. I can gain an additional point of. Uh, I can gain an additional point, but not much more than that. So, I, I'm going to wait this out for the sole purpose of uh, trying to make a still or someone else attack them, which is, I know, uh, kind of, kind of not likable, likely, but we'll see. Berber ideas: naval force limit is plus plus 25. Cost of reducing war exhaustion minus 33. So I should probably gotten that a little bit earlier, but nothing to do about that right now. So I think, uh, unfortunately, we will not be getting uh, what I want, which is not the best, but I won't even be able to humiliate them. But war operations is uh, definitely a possibility here. <clears throat> Forcing them to give up their alliance with Portugal is definitely going to be useful. Anything else? Uh, Pope, Tuscany. Who are they actually allied with? Portugal and Galicia. Well give up that alliance as well, but as you can see, they won't actually accept that, which is not good. So, as much as I wish I could do some, well, bigger moves here, I think this will be all we'll be doing. We'll be taking the gold, of course, which will be useful in the future, but unfortunately, dragging this war out doesn't really solve all. 
I don't think it will end well, but I'll drag it out a little bit longer, and we'll see what happens in the next episode. Thank you for watching, please leave a comment, praise, criticism, anything you feel like, and I'll see you around next time. Bye.